and there is a bunch of them. Holy smokes, they are from 15 to 20. <laughs> I'm fixing to catch one, I promise you. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Man, it's summertime. I don't have a lot of wind, but what I have is fish that are gonna be offshore. I'm out here, I'm gonna try to find them on my electronics. I'm gonna try to show you how I find them on my electronics. Then I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna try to catch them. There's a lot of baits that I could use to catch them, but in my mind, there's one best bait, one of the, the, the best bait to find them offshore. And that's gonna be a crankbait. I'm here on Grand, it's the middle of June. Uh, the water's normal level. There had been a lot of current coming through the lake. Now it's kind of shut down. I'm kind of bummed about that, but I'm gonna dive off into all these reasons why I think the crankbait's the best and how I find them on my electronics and what I look for. Let's go, Project E coming at you. All right, here we go. The number one mistake that I think a guy makes trying to find offshore fish is he's gonna fish all the way around the point with a Carolina rig, a jig, a football jig, crankbait, whatever it is, but he's gonna fish all the way around it. What I like to do is idle, 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 use these to find my fish, then turn around and make one cast on those fish. And what I'm gonna do different than the weekend guy is I'm gonna fish like 30 of these in an hour where a weekend guy is gonna fish one because it's gonna take him a long time to go around it, and then another, and then another, and by the end of the, the hour, he's gonna only have fished four or five. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just start idling. I'm gonna idle, 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 idle until I see him on my electronics. Okay, the question is, on your lake, what depth do you want to start looking when you're out here idling? You know, Edwin, like, man, I'll go do this, but what depth do I need to do it? General rule, guys, general, 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 is all about water clarity. So if I've got a foot and a half of visibility, let's say two foot to make numbers easy, times it times five. Take two times five, that's 10. Starting at 10 foot of water, look, eight to 12, right there either side of it. You know, here, I've got about three foot of visibility. You know, when I look at my bait over the side, I times that times five, I'm gonna start around that 15. Now today we may catch them in 20, we may catch them up in 12, but that's a starting point. The dingier the water, the shallower, the clearer the water, the deeper. I mean, heck, you may be on Table Rock and have five or six foot of visibility. You times that times five, you know, that takes it out to 25, 30 feet as your starting point, and you could actually catch them deeper than that. So. That's just a general rule where to start when you're thinking about idling out here over these points, how deep do you look? Just take your visibility times it times five and that's gonna give you a starting point. So when I'm idling, you know, there's a lot of things you can look for. You know, you got secondary points all the way going back in these pockets. You got main lake points. I like to look for subtle features, subtle points, not big gargantuan points. Those will have fish on them, but they also draw the most attention from your other anglers out on the water. So I want more subtle rounded points that don't stick out like glaring because those draw the attention. The other thing that I'm gonna think about on the body of water when I'm looking for offshore summertime fish is are they pulling water? If they're pulling water, I wanna be on that main channel, out on that main drag or main point in a big, big creek. If they're not pulling water, my venture then goes back up into those secondary points and those smaller creeks even. So to simplify that a little bit for you, if they're pulling water in your lake, if they're generating, be on those main points, main corners. That's one thing I can help do to narrow down your search when you're looking for those offshore fish. One mistake I see a lot of guys make when they're idling, don't get to going too fast. You know, when you go too fast, your depth finder will not pick up those little things that you're looking for on there. So I just basically take my foot off the throttle. I wanna go as slow as possible uh, so I can see everything that's down there. Okay, the other thing I like to do I like to turn these back units off. I don't want them interfering with my front unit. You know, I don't want the added pinging. I want to have a really clear picture up front. So just be sure you put these in standby. 
Super simple, I've just got this top button set up as my standby button. I can push it real quick, they come right back on. I push it again, they go right back off. You know, so for me, I've got four different crankbaits tied on. I've got a 14.5, a 17.5, a 25, and a 25.5. That's the depth of the numbers I'm saying, 14, 17, 20, and 25. I've got all of them on 12 pound fluorocarbon. I think that's a must. Uh, one, the fluorocarbon, I feel like it's just a dense line, doesn't have a lot of stretch. I can really feel what's going on with that. You know, if you have a monofilament, you get a lot of stretch. I don't feel like the baits get as deep with monofilament. Um, and braid, I just, I would never do it with braid. I've got them on six, eight to one gear ratio reels. Anything from a six to one to a seven to one is what I like. Uh, you get like an eight to one, it just, it will flat wear you out. I got my 20 and my 25 on seven tens. I've got my 17 and my 14s on seven sixes. Uh, I think that's important too, just to help you make a super, super long cast. Because if you're not making a long cast, you're not achieving the depth of that crankbait that you can uh, in a shorter cast. So I really like making super long casts, thus why I have such long rods. I lock that sucker right into my ribs right there and I just, I pull on it, you know. I'm gonna pull, pause, pull, pause. Uh, I just think that makes a big difference. I'm using my arm right here to pull against that rod, kind of twisting my body. And that really helps me feel what's going on down there. I like when I hit the bottom, I always like to pause that thing, you know, just to give a bass something, you know, a second to find it, you know, when, it, when I hit the bottom. It's just, you remember, we've talked about it in my videos, throwing spinner baits and vibrating jigs and everything else. Remember, change your speed. Don't just do the same thing over and over and over. Always give it a different speed, a stop, a go, a pause, a twitch, something. You know, make, make that bait do something different down there to trigger those bites. So on this retrieve, I'm, I'm cranking it as fast and as hard as I can to get it down to the bottom, to get it going. And then once I feel like I've got it, then I find my bait, I feel it. I'm feeling that bait right now. I just went over a, a rock or a stump. I'm pulling it, I can feel it really good by pulling it to the side. You notice I'm moving that bait with my rod, not my reel as I'm pulling it to the side. I, I really like that. It gives it a, a pull pause type retrieve. And uh, it's kind of just constantly changing what that bait's doing and it's helping me feel that bait. There's one. Oh yeah, that feels like a good one. See what I'm talking about, about idling over that spot you know that's vital four or five six different spots i haven't fished them this is the first spot i've idled and they were stacked up yes look at this one look at this one all right i got one hook in this puppy so i just pushed my button oh one hook one hook so i just got my button pushed here on my reel you can see it just because they're always going to make a surge Right here at the boat. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Golly, that's a tough one to get. Yes, 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 yes. Check that one out. Check that one out. That's a big one. Look at that post spawn fish. Her old tail's rubbed off right there. Just coming out here trying to get a bite to eat. All right, guys, I need to sit here and and talk and all this stuff, tell you why I caught this fish. But that's one thing about it. If I can get a bait back in there really quick, thank you, girl, we might catch another one. I cannot stress enough how critical it is to make a long cast. That's the only way you're giving that bait an opportunity to get to the bottom. If you think about that crankbait, it only has a very small window of opportunity to be effective because it takes it so long to get to the bottom. And then once it gets so close to the boat, it's gotta start coming back up. So to really incre increase your chances and your odds, make, do whatever you can to make a long cast. You know, one tip I can give you is I hold my reel vertical. I hold it like this. I feel like the spool being on a central axis is a little bit freer. I don't know if it is or not, but. When I cast, I always turn my reel sideways to help it go five feet further. Mm -hmm. 
I think something really critical when you're throwing this crankbait out off the points, there's always gonna be one angle of a cast that's gonna be the best. So, you know, I've moved around on here quite a bit, but it seems like once my boat's in one position, right about 10 more feet, that's the cast that triggered that last bite. And uh, I need to make sure I make that same exact cast again before I give up on them. So I just went over a group of fish. I'm gonna pull straight away from them and it's just a great way to make that exact cast. You can throw right in the trail of your boat. I do it all the time. I just throw directly behind my boat. So that way I know I'm gonna come over exactly what I just saw on my screen. There's one. Doesn't feel like a real big one, but it's a fish. Oh, it might be good. Oh yeah, it's a nice one. Not a big one. Oh, look at all of them with it. There's a whole school of them. I mean, there had to be like 20 fish with it. I just let it down there to try to get another one. There was like, oh, look at them, look at them, look at them. There's a bunch of them. Look at them all. Holy smokes. I wonder if I could drop something down there and catch one. That's crazy. That is crazy. Huh. Oh, I got another one. I got another one. I got two of them. Oh, now what am I gonna do? Now what am I gonna do? Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Can't, you know, you can't, let's see if I can get both of these in here. They're not big ones, but I got two of them, by golly. There was like 10. I mean, there was so many of them, it was crazy. Oh, don't get tangled up. Hey, don't get tangled up. Oh! Wait a second, I'm gonna leave you in the water. I'm gonna step on that rod. Okay, and then I'm gonna get that one off. It's a chunky, fat little fish. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pretty cool. The other one's out there jumping. Let me get him in. He's a little fighter. Thanks, buddy. That's why you summertime fish, because there gets to be a monster group of them out there. That's fun, that's fun, that's fun. Let's do it again, let's do it again. Where'd I go, where'd I go? Oh, I done got up on him. You know, I've caught, you know, a few fish here now. Uh, I've messed this group of fish up. You know, I've got snagged in that brush pile. I don't think the fish were holding in that brush pile, but you know, I got up on top of it and got to banging around, broke a bait off. I'm gonna let them rest. That's what you gotta do. You know, after you've caught three or four, they scatter. Let them rest. If you can, 20, 30, 40 minutes, then come back. We'll come back in a little bit and see what happens. We have been out here roughly 45 minutes. I have fished one, two, three, three. No, I fished two points and I've idled like five. So I just want to get you guys into a rhythm of how much I'm moving. Uh, and generally it'd be a lot quicker than that. You know, I'm filming, trying to talk about things and catch, you know, fish and talk and this, that, and the other. But uh, I just want you to think about that. That's how long I've been out here. That's how many spots I fished, two, and I've idled five. Those are bass. See how they're down on the bottom? Those are definitely bass, in my opinion. They're not spaced really close together. Got some shad brush piled right there above them. And there is a bunch of them. Holy smokes, they are from 15 to 20. <laughs> I'm fixing to catch one, I promise you. Right there. Yes, buddy. First cast up there. Very first cast. He's a mile back there, too. I'm going to hit that spot lock. Lock us down, and we're going to educate as many of them as we can right now. Yes, 
sudden, oh gosh, did no one get it? I didn't think he was that big. Holy smoke, something happened here. Oh, no, oh, he come off. Gosh almighty, Dad, gum it. I think I had two of them, golly. Ah, oh, that hurt. It like got, it changed. Oh, one just come up. Dad, gum it. Dang it. I, I had two of them. Gosh dang it. There's one. Yes. Right when I got down there. Oh, it feels like a good one. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe these are better than I thought they were. Man, those big ones were in the back, and I ain't even got up to them small ones. Feels like a decent one. It's fixing to jump. It's fixing to jump. Come here, baby. Oh. Oh, I got two. I got two. <laughs> one of them's a spot. Oh, it come off. Damn it. Both of them come off. Golly. I told you there was a lot of them, though. Damn it. It's two casts in a row I've had two. <laughs> I just like it. I had a lot of fun flipping, but golly, this is fun too. I, I don't, I like catching them. I lost both of them. Two casts in a row. Mm -hmm.